What's up everybody? Welcome back to Austin's Automotive. Today we're going to be getting into starting the bodywork on the El Camino. So I know bodywork's not everybody's favorite thing and a lot of people are honestly scared of it. And to be honest, uh, you know, it's, it's not anything to be scared of. It's just a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. And, uh, you know, I know that's something else that a lot of people just don't like. It just takes a ton of time. Putting this uh, body filler on, sanding it off. It's not fun, it's not easy. But let's get into it. I'll show you a few of the products I use. All right, let's start off with some of the tools we're gonna be using. So, we're gonna first look at the board file, air file. That's for your uh, big flat areas. You wanna block out. That works out good. Then we've got our six inch palm sander. This is for a light cut. Um, you know, this is getting towards the end, kind of smoothing everything up, taking out your sand scratches, um, or just doing your prep work, stuff like that, light cut. Um, if you're doing body work, bondo, shaping, or if you want to, uh, you know, tear this down to bare metal and you're trying to sand a lot of layers of paint, this is more your tool here, heavy cut, six inch DA. Again, you know, I have snap on, but I upgraded after a long time. I started out with hand-me-downs. Um, I, I believe my first one was actually a garage sale. So, you know, you don't have to start out with fancy stuff. This just, just took me a lot of years to get these. And then we jump up to the eight inch mud hog. So, you know, that's really good for cutting down big areas if you're putting down a lot of mud. Uh, this will really cut it down, straighten it up quick. So that's a, a must right there if you're doing a lot of body work. So then we dive into the manual options, which these are probably be what we use the most, unfortunately, when we're trying to get stuff straight. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I use the Dura blocks. There's a lot of different ones out there. I mean, you could use a two before if it's straight, a uh, piece of steel, whatever you got. Um, just remember what you're using is what you're going to be getting on your surface here. So, uh, you know, if it's crooked, you're going to be blocking crooked. So. Hammers. I actually use a Harbor Freight set still. Um, I've still got the original kit I bought. I do have a really nice snap-on set. I do have, uh, you know, here's another one snap-on hammer. Um, I do have some other hammers. This one just happens to be my favorite. Um, like I say, I've had this set for a long time. It's been got a lot of dents. So, can't complain about that. Uh, putty spreader, you know, these are pretty universal. Red Scotch Brights, you know, Got to make sure everything's prepped really, really good. That's the number one key in bodywork. Prep, prep, prep. Can't sander, you know, enough. You got to make sure it's scuffed up good. You don't want any adhesion problems. So always go over it with those. But that's towards the end there. So sandpaper, I do use Hook It on my two smaller sanders. Um, I use this Norton Dry Ice. It's 80 grit. It seems to just last a long time. Um, I've been using it for a while. Uh, here recently, I've kind of been dipping into the Amazon though. So got some 36 uh, grit Amazon paper and it works pretty good, especially for the money. Um, then we dive up into the eight inch, uh, three in, or three M stick it. I got some 36 and then some 80 grit. Just get those at the local parts store. I don't know, you don't go through a ton of those, the 36 grit, you know, if you're careful, that piece can last you a long time, a really long time, and I've even, you know, I'm cheap, I can get them off and stick them back on. You know, you can get a lot of use is what I'm saying out of those things, so these last a long time. And then board file paper, I use, uh, again, some Amazon stuff, it's, um, uh, what is it? Dura Gold 80 grit stick it. So that's what I use there. I've been pretty happy with it so far, especially uh, I think it was 20 bucks for that roll. So happy with that. Mixing board, you know, here's, uh, you know, 
I used to use anything I could get my hands on, cardboard, a uh, piece of wood, piece of sheet metal. So really, I mean, at the end of the day, it works. I use a cutting board and I, it works. Those disposable paper ones, uh, just, I don't know, they never hooked me. This has always worked for me. Just kind of sand her up if you need to, but usually I can keep laying her on smooth enough and keep layering her up and then you just throw her on the ground, break her off, start over again. And uh, I've had this board for a while. You know, they're only a couple bucks. So that's what I use. Use what you like, but that's what I use. Uh, fiber fill for like some fiberglass filler. I use the U-Pole. It's a uh, fiber light, sandable fiberglass filler. Uh, pretty good stuff. I really like the way it spreads out. Uh, mixes good, spreads good, sands good, price is good, um, no complaints. 3M body filler, 3M Platinum Plus. Um, I've used a lot of different fillers over the years, and you know what I can say about fillers: the cheap stuff is going to probably last just as long. But man, will you work at getting there to the end product. That uh, Mondo brand, $20 a gallon stuff, boy, you work for your money. Uh, but you can't use it. It's just hard, hard, hard to sand. Uh, so this stuff I found is a good, it spreads out nice, it sands good, uh, it dries good. It's just, I haven't had any problems with it. I've used it for a long time and really like it. So. Use what you like, but uh, I have dipped into the cheaper stuff and it just sands hard. That's why I don't like it. So, guide coat, I use SEM. Um, I used to try to use flat black spray paint. Again, trying to be cheap, it just did, you ball up your sandpaper, it just doesn't work. So, this is what I found to work out the best. So, that's kind of what we're going to be getting into today. That's about what I use. Um, there's more to it. If you guys got more questions, let me know. That's what I use. So let's get into it. All right, I got us elevated. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start by blocking her out. So I did prime this blue. Kind of works out as a couple different things. Uh, once we start sanding this down, we're going to get into the factory color. And, uh, you know, that's going to kind of work as a guide coat. Also, um, you know, we are going for, that's one of the things you got to pick on bodywork. What, what's your end goal? What, what do you want this car to look like when you're done? Because at the end of the day, I could, I could have this ready to paint by the end of the night if we were just going for, you know, wham, bam, let's get it painted. Um, I want it to look pretty nice, a nice driver, you know, at least. So we are going to be flowing, you know, the doors together, the fenders together. We will be, you know, blending on all, all together with filler. You know, this whole car is gonna get pretty well covered in filler. That's just the way it is. Um, you know, you, you, you're not putting a ton of filler on it, but you are gonna pretty well glaze it. So that is gonna be what we're gonna get into. So let's start blocking her out. So I'm gonna start out with the hand block, 80 grit. And we're just going to sand always sand and Xing, you know, we want to X this. You can see what we got showing up. We just back her up this way and X is it. Quite a bit straighter than I remember. Not too bad. I think I'm going to jump up to the air file though.
All right, I just kind of wanted to show you guys what I'm looking at here. So this is what we're looking for, these low spots. That's what blocking's showing us. And then we're getting through the high spots. So, you know, everything that's yellow here, that's, you know, uh, original color, old body filler is what most of this is um, that I put on here before I did the blue. You know, that was all high and we're getting down where this is uh, low and this is really low. We haven't even touched it with our sander. Um, and then we come back in here. We've got, you know, just a very, very minimal uh, spot there, but that'll fix the prime. You know, we've got a very small spot here that we need to put just a little filler on because we're in a metal here and here. So we can't uh, go any lower there. You know, it kind of continues the same over here. You know, we've got some metal, a little bit of low, you know, some of this, uh, this Needs just a tiny, tiny glaze coat of filler. And then here again, we get on this seam, you know, uh, we did do some metal work here, so this seam needs kind of straightened up anyways and and uh, filled together. So that's what we're looking for is, is uh, you know, that's why we use guide coat, is that uh, kind of just lets you see the different colors and, and see where your low and your high is. And uh, that's basically the, the just of getting things straight Guide coater out and find your low spots. You know, like we got a little one there. Very, very little. You can barely feel it, but you can see it, you know. So, we fix all of those and it will be pretty. So we got our blocked out and you can see we've got our low spots that we need to hit, you know, here and there. Don't look too bad, but uh, overall we just got to lightly hit a few spots, nothing crazy. What I'm going to focus on first is I want to go ahead and put a layer of fiberglass filler on these. You don't have to, but I like to anywhere I weld in a patch um, or anywhere that that I'm concerned with anything that could possibly ever come through. We are gonna seem to see all this up and everything, but I still just wanna go ahead and put a uh, layer of fiber fill over it. And I'm gonna go ahead and go down the door gyms also with that, uh, just because that is our door edge and it's just a little bit stronger. So uh, that way we've got most of it is gonna be fiberglass, so.
just a little trick I found. Clean those spreaders off while they're wet with a rag. And uh, you can save them for a while. I'm cheap, I know. So you can see, I'm taking this uh, wide spreader here, getting her level all the way across. And uh, we're just filling those doors shut. We'll cut them back open later and get her nice reveal line. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and bondo this together now and we'll block it all nice and straight. That's also kind of seals these doors shut. You can see I've kind of got it propped open where it's gonna be with the rubber. And now that fiberglass will kind of hold it there. So we can block this door all to the fender in the quarter. And uh, then when we cut it back open, they'll be uh, hopefully perfect, you know? So that's the ultimate goal. So that's what we're trying anyways. We got the covers. Um, We'll let that dry, come back, rough her up, put some more Bondo on it. We'll be back at it tomorrow. All right, we're ready to get back on it this morning. So this is dried up really good, nice and hard. So we're just going to uh, rough it up a little bit so we can get our filler put over it. We'll go ahead and fill her this side out. We got those roughed up, got her blue off. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and fill this side out. Um, now, I don't really have any big dents. Um, everything's pretty straight. Everything on here is pretty minimal. You know, it's just a little bit of rippliness here and there. So, we're just gonna do a flow coat pretty well over the whole thing. And I know that's gonna scare a lot of people. Oh, it's just full of Bondo. You gotta realize the Bondo is very, very thin across the whole thing. That's the only way you're gonna get this thing perfectly straight. I mean, look at this quarter panel. It's just full of dents and it's a brand new quarter panel. And uh, it's just full of dents. And you know, a little bit of it could be heat distortion from welding it on and then doing this heat up here. But you know, it's, it's brand new and it's just, it, it needs a lot of work to make it look really nice. So. That's what we're going to do. It's my car at the end of the day, so I'm going to be happy with it.
Just sprayed a quick coat of guide coat on it, see kind of where we're at. I'm going to hit her with the uh, 8 inch mud hog first to get it uh, knocked down and then we'll start hitting it with the air file. All right, I just wanted to take a quick minute to show you guys kind of what I'm looking at. So I'm sanding pretty flat with that sander, as flat as I can. And when I sand, I'm kind of just running it back and forth at an angle and down at this curve also. And then I'm coming back and I'm Xing it. When you do that, it's pretty well impossible when you X them and you're sanding scratch directions like that it's pretty well impossible to get her crooked uh everything else gonna straighten up pretty good that way so i'm just kind of taking it down to where i'm just getting flat i want to leave a little bit of material here that way we can still block this down but we want to get this flattened out most of the way uh, before we waste our time getting into too much blocking so just gonna leave a little bit but that right there is pretty good I'm going to start blocking now on that. We'll keep going back here. Just kind of want to show you guys what I'm doing. So let's keep at it. All right, so I just wanted to bring you in, show you what we're working with. I got that blocked down with the air file. Now we're gonna get into the unfun stuff of blocking by hand. See, there's a few spots here that we may, you know, we're definitely gonna have to have a little filler there. Definitely a little bit there. But overall, we're pretty good. Maybe a couple little pinholes, but really, it's pretty darn good. I like to just, uh, Take my hand to it. It's a little, uh, I don't know, squared off where it seems to be around. Uh, and you can kind of get that feel by hand a little better. But it really turned out pretty good. So to keep at it, we'll have to add just a little filler in here. There'll be a couple spots, but just kind of want to show you guys the process. 
Let's get back at it. So we got it all hand blocked out. This is what we're left with. We're not gonna mess with this body line yet. We're working on, we've got just a little bit right here. Um, we've got little spots, nothing major, but we are gonna touch up a few spots. The door's really pretty good. Got just a little spot here. I did rough up this Bondo underneath just a little bit. You don't have to get crazy with that. A lot of guys don't even rough it up, so. And then our biggest spots right here which isn't very big at all. It's very minimal fill, but here's our biggest spot. A little bit back here. So we're gonna get more mud on that and then we'll get to that body line. So we got her all blocked down, got all the low spots filled, I think. Now we're down to the body line. Uh, I went ahead and dusted a quick coat of guide coat over it and just re-blocked the whole thing again, just to kind of make sure that we're pretty straight. That can kind of help you uh, keep your body work straight before we start throwing primer on. Um, you know, just keep guide coating, keep blocking, just make sure you're doing all right. So, all right, let's get back to this body line. So. Anytime we're doing a body line, this is the best method I've found. Just take some tape and put on either side of your body line, and then we'll block down to it. Works pretty good for like wheel wells. Uh, we've got a spot up here where we're gonna have to tape our body line back, and uh, we've already blocked this flat side off. So we'll put our tape here. Let's just do it real quick. tape along this body line. And we just block down to that tape. That kind of keeps our body line straight. So we want to do that across this whole center. Now the center's got not a very sharp body line where this is pretty sharp. So we really want to crisp that one up here. But this one we're just going to make a nice straight crisp body line for a minute and then we're going to come back and just roll it off because that's the way this is factor gets pretty pretty rolled so let's get her tape you just kind of want to pick pick one side here and pick the top or the bottom I'm going to pick the bottom side first and we're going to Stick that there. This is the easiest way to get a straight line. 
pull yourself a long line. And you can quickly see how bad our body line is. You know, we're on the bottom of it here, and here we're at, you know, a full finger. So we definitely need to bring that down. So that's why we do this. We got that on there. It's pretty simple from here. Block down to that tape. center's got a few low spots so if we were trying to make a nice crisp body line we definitely want to take care of those before we proceeded but as I said this uh, body line's really rounded off so I think that's actually going to be just fine because we're going to cut most of that off so All right, bring you in for one closer look. So that's what we're looking at. There's just a tiny, tiny little spot. So I'm gonna come back and just put just a tiny little bit of glaze on there, but I don't know if that picks up in the, in the camera there. We've got a nice body line there. So got a little spot up here to touch. So we got bent all there, a little guide coat there yet, so. And we got just a little tiny bit down here. Not much. Coming along pretty good though. Side's about done, ready for primer. We painted it yellow again. All right, we're back. So, just kinda wanted to give you guys a close up. We're pretty well done. I've blocked everything out. I've got my body lines where I like them. Just kinda wanted to bring a close up here and show you some of these body lines. They don't show up real good, but hopefully you guys can see that. And we've got this one's really tough to see on camera but we do got that long gradual one so if you stand back yeah the whole car is pretty well covered but really it's not as bad as it looks i mean you know this is down to our fiberglass this is down to our blue prime again you know we're fiberglass there we're blue paint you know we're into an old bondo there you know we're originally yellow paint there or metal there so i mean yes we do got a lot on here, but no, it's not that thick. Uh, it's just enough to make it straight and look good. And it's just, it is what it is. This is just the behind the scenes of body work. This is just how it looks. But uh, it's coming along pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with it. Got this up here looking good. So we've got this side to where I'm pretty happy with it. Now I'm just gonna run over everything real quick with 180 on the palm sander, just to kind of smooth out any sand scratches and everything, and uh, get some of this blue paint here that we haven't touched yet. Get everything roughed up on this side, and this side's ready for primer. So I'm happy with it. We'll continue on the rest of the car, but that is the basics. If you guys got any questions, let me know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully what I told you guys today helps you guys out. Hopefully you guys learned something. Let's get back at it.
So this morning we're going to jump in to getting the door gaps cut back open and getting them looking good. So I'm going to use my body saw to get the door cut open. And then I've got this little uh, file attachment. I haven't tried this method yet uh, before. Something new I'm trying here in front of you guys. But I'm going to try put that in there and see if I can't clean that edge up. Once you get the door open though, it, uh, it does hand sand out pretty good. I'm just going to try this. Check it out guys, I got the door gaps all sanded, got everything finished out with 180, went ahead and scuffed everything on this side, so this side of the car is ready for a primer, just kind of wanted to give you guys a look at it before we put some primer on it, really happy with that turned out, got really nice gaps. All right, let's mask it up and put some primer on it. All right, so let's mix some primer for that thing. So I uh, do spray Nason XL. I got the bank and everything. Um, it's a Curlmax Exalta product. So i uh, been really happy with it. But in that comes their primer surfacer. Um, you know, any 2K urethane primer, se primer sealer I build primer will work for this. This is just what I'm using. Um, I also do have some U pull. I just don't have enough, or I'd probably use it. But uh, some U pull high build primer surfacer that also works really good. Super friendly on the old wallet. So uh, you guys can give that a try. Let me know what you all use. Um, I've had good luck with both of these. Um, you know, this one's definitely quite a bit more expensive. But you know, if you're trying to push work out, collision work, and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's, it's good to work with. Um, I, I've been really happy with it. That's what we're going to use today. So I also use uh, 3M PPS cups, disposable. I like it, works pretty nice. Let's get one here we can read.
All right, this mix is four to one. Pretty easy. Especially with these cups, you know, you just measure up. You know, you find your three to one, four to one, two to one, whatever. You know, it's just line to line to line. It's pretty easy stuff, especially with the cups. Mixing paints really easy, especially, uh, you know, all you gotta do is just read the instructions. That's about it. Alright, we run that up to six. So we'll put our activator in it. Then we top it off with a little reducer. I'm gonna use this 3M disposable tip gun. I got the 2.0 tip on it. That'll uh, put a good heavy coat. These lids got built-in strainers. Pretty nice setup. Let's go spray. Alright, I haven't ever showed you guys a spray booth. It's homemade. It gets the job done, or we hope it gets the job done. This is uh, the old trial run on her. Um, yeah, that's carpet you're looking at. Your eyes aren't tricked. Uh, you know, it's something that I've seen a lot of on the internet. A lot of guys trying. Had good success. Um, I'm giving her a try. It was a couple hundred dollar investment. And if it helps dust control, I'm down. So, especially with what we're working with, but hey, I guarantee it's gonna get the job done. So first thing we're gonna do, get this thing wiped down with some wax and grease remover, and then we're gonna shoot some primer on. Before I spray it, I'm going to hit it with a tack cloth. I've been working on the tailgate a little bit off camera also, so I got it ready to spray. So we're going to go ahead and get these sprayed real quick. First coat. And we gotta wait about 10, 15 minutes in between coats until it's just starting to get hand slick. Um, that's when we put, wanna put our next coat on. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and probably put two to three good heavy coats on and we'll let it dry for a few days and sand it out.
All right, boy, do I got a surprise for y'all. I am excited. So we got uh, two to three coats of heavy prime on there. Uh, my GoPro died on me just in the middle of it. I apologize about that, but we did get two to three heavy good coats on there. Super, super happy with how it turned out. It looks really good for the first prime. Uh, we're gonna let this dry for two to three days. We're gonna guide coat it out, and then we're gonna start all over again with our blocking. But we're gonna drop down to 180 grit instead of our 40 and 80. Uh, so we're gonna drop down to 180, and then we're gonna try to work up uh, higher grits from there. Uh, that's kind of our next process on this side, but oh, I'm going to start working on the other side and the whole rest of the car because there's a lot of body work that I need to get caught up on. But let's check out what I want to show you guys. Check it out, guys. New wheels. So excited. I love Supremes. We got 15 sevens all the way around. We got uh, the bullet center caps, bullet lug nuts. I'm waiting on a few more lug nuts. Man, doesn't it look good. I am just so excited. We got this whole side slicked up. No handle here. Our door gaps look great. Gosh, it looks good. Uh, just so excited with how it looks with those wheels. Really, uh, really makes me think maybe she needs to come down just a little bit more. Uh, still tossing around that idea, we'll see. But uh, really liking the way these wheels make it look. I reused the same tires, I just flipped them around, got the black wall out. Really, really happy with it. And they are brand new. Like I say, I just picked them up. Same tires. Did pick the wheels up on swap. Uh, I've been patiently waiting, guys, just watching that swap. And, uh, you know, I, I am trying to do this on a budget and I was able to pick up brand new wheels and save myself uh, quite a bit of money off retail so it's all you guys got to do just keep watching keep waiting eventually those deals do come up I got lucky man it looks good get the rest of those lug nuts they really fit nice For you guys wanting to know the sizes, we got two 35-60-15s on the rear, BF Goodriches. We got 205-60s in the front, same BF Goodrich. Really like it. Let me know what you guys think. today really hope you guys are enjoying this and hope you guys are learning something on this trip uh, let me know uh, let me know if there's something you guys want to know more of or less of I'm doing my best here so really appreciate uh, everybody's comments likes, shares continue that let's keep uh, growing this thing hope you all like the wheels let me know and uh, really hope you guys are liking the way it looks gosh it looks so good I'm super happy uh, we got a lot of work to do to get the other side caught up, but that's what I'll be doing. want to give a quick shout out to Kayla. She's been doing an amazing job getting these edited. Uh, you know, this isn't something that uh, we knew a lot about getting into, and she's doing a bang up job. She's doing a really good job of this. So, really appreciate everybody following along on this. Hope you guys are enjoying it. See you guys next time. Thanks, guys.